Hey, Ashley here from Green Cardian Marketing. We help law firms grow into scalable businesses that are profitable and generate quality leads through our marketing efforts. So I was asked the question this week of how much does a website cost? Now, this is a frequently asked question. Therefore, I wanna record this video to help others who are curious as to what they should be paying for. So the price of a website is gonna depend on the company you're using, right? It's gonna depend on the quality of their work, years of experience, as well as the deliverables. But the deliverables part is where I see the confusion lies. So all of these factors make sense except the deliverables. So I wanna give you five questions to ask when you are requesting a website proposal. Question number one, does your website proposal include content or are you required to write the content? You are a lawyer, I'm a marketer, we write content differently. We wanna make sure though for your website, yes, it needs to be factually correct, but are we writing it in the style that's gonna rank with Google? We know that 60% uh, of American users are finding their lawyer online or they are saying their final decision is based on that law firm's website. So I wanna encourage you to stay away from writing your own content. We wanna make sure your content ranks well with Google and we are abiding by all the SEO uh, rules and regulations that we need to be abiding by. Additionally, I wanna ask you to ask the company you're working with or who you're requesting a proposal from, have they ever worked with law firms? We wanna make sure that content um, is abiding by our state regulations and our ethics regulations. So have they worked with law firms? If not, that would be a red flag. Question number two, do I own the website? If the answer is no, you're not gonna own your website to run as fast as you can. If the answer is you will own the website as long as you are a client of ours, you need to run as fast as you can. You are gonna need to dig into these questions um, to understand um, what, if someone's being a little skeptical or a little confusing, you're gonna need to dig in and see what's on your agreement. There are a few of the big players in the legal marketing industry that do this. Um, another way of getting to the bottom of their answer would be, can I add another marketing vendor to my website? Again, if they say no, this is probably your chance to run. It's your website, it is your asset. You should be able to add whoever you want to it. So do you own your website and do you own the content of your website? Number three, ask in the proposal, what is the health of the website? Are you gonna maintain the health of my website? So understanding if your website is healthy and if this part of the deliverables is very important. So is the company you're working with, are, gonna, are they gonna be updating plugins on the website? What about the website's theme? It needs to be updated. So we wanna ensure that your website remains healthy. So the plugins on your website are very similar to the apps on your phone. Just as your phone needs to be plugged in, uh, it needs to be charged, you need to connect to Wi-Fi to update the apps on your phone, your website is the same. The, the apps, if you will, on your website need to be updated as well. So without frequent maintenance, your website is going to be vulnerable, vulnerable to being hacked, and or crashing because the plugins have expired and they need to be updated. So ask, is it included? What is the ongoing maintenance of keeping my website healthy? Question number four, when you're asking for a website proposal is ask about the hosting. If the company you're building with or requesting a proposal from requires you to use their hosting, that's fine, but be sure you understand the scope of that agreement. How long is the contract? If they own their own hosting, what happens if you move your website to a new hosting provider? For hosting, also ask how often they are performing a backup of your site. I would encourage you to ask or push that there is a minimum of a daily one backup of your website. So when you're asking about hosting, you wanna know what is the longevity of the hosting and how often are you backing up my website to that hosting platform? Final question, question number five, what platform are you building my website on? If you receive four um, estimates and three are in the same similar ballpark in terms of pricing and one is not, ask why. Make sure you're comparing apples to apples. WordPress is a very reputable platform, industry standard for websites. It's what I would encourage you, if you're having a website built for your law firm, to have it built on WordPress. If, for example, your website is being built on a self-builder platform, you want to investigate further. These platforms and WordPress are not apples to apples. Both have a place in the market, but for a law firm, I would encourage you to stay away from any self-building platform. Stick with WordPress. It's gonna cost more. You're, gonna, you're not gonna be able to design it yourself, but it is worth it in the long run. So how much does a website cost? Well, it depends, but I'm hopeful that these five questions will help you better understand your scope, 
your deliverables and your price and help you make the best decision going forward for your law firm. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that this and all the content we put out helps you in your journey to growing your law firm.